When you get art from a customer, it can be in all shapes and sizes. Thus, you should review the art to be able to quote your job accurately. In this video, I will give you some steps to analyze customer art files and show you some critical checkpoints that could impact your workflow. A common misconception outside the graphics industry is that a PDF of artwork should just work, and a lot of times, that's just not the case. A PDF can contain all different kinds of art, from raster photos to vector logos. Now let me explain the basic types of artwork. The most common vector file types are CDR, SVG, PDF, EPS, and AI. Most of these file types can also contain raster, bitmap, or photos inside of them. Some common raster and bitmap or photo image types are JPEG, PNG, GIF, PSD, and TIFF. Most images from the web or internet are JPEGs, PNGs, or GIFs. For example, a screenshot from someone's phone will always be a raster image, most likely a JPEG. To learn more about raster versus vector art, see our video in the Corel Discovery Center. All right, let's get to analyzing an art file with fonts. The first thing I always do is import the file. That way, I have the document settings set the way I want and then bring the art into my base file versus opening it because I may not have the software that it was created in. Okay, I'm gonna jump to a blank page in my document and then I'm gonna come up and choose File and Import. Now you need to browse to where the file is saved on your hard drive. Mine's on my desktop and I'm gonna select it. A bonus tip I have for you is if you turn on the preview pane in Windows, you might be able to see a thumbnail of what the actual art looks like. So that it gives us a general approximation of what to look for when we're bringing it in. And I'm ready to click import to bring it in, click import. Now a dialog box is gonna come up sometimes. If this is coming up because it's a PDF that we're importing, it's gonna ask me, do we wanna import the text as text or do we wanna import the text as curves? If we think we wanna edit it and see what the fonts are, you can leave it as text. And if you want it converted to curves, which usually makes the artwork more accurate, you can click curves. To show you another tip I'm gonna give you is about the missing fonts. We're gonna leave it as text right now. And we're also gonna leave these options alone right now. So let's click okay and see what comes up. Another dialog comes up. This is the missing fonts dialog box. It's telling me that this font in this artwork is not on my computer. So I gotta make a decision of how to handle that right now. If I know a font to substitute it, I can substitute it. And if I don't, I usually just click temporary so I can get inside the file to see what's going on. And also here is where you might wanna make notes of the font names in case you need to search for them on the internet. And then I click OK. And then when I'm ready to bring it into the file, it has a cursor here, but with when I'm bringing in customer's artwork, I always hit the space bar because it's gonna land exactly as the size that the customer made it. I don't wanna scale it in case the size is very critical to the job. So if I hit space bar, it's gonna land the artwork, there it is. And see now this font doesn't look like that font that was in the preview. So this is not accurate artwork at all. So let's do that same process again. I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna do file import and bring it in the other way so you can see how it comes in correctly when you choose curves. So we choose curves, click okay. This time, no font dialog box, hit space bar. And that looks just like the preview in the Windows window. Next, let's move on to reviewing the key checkpoints to look for inside of the artwork. These checkpoints can add minutes or hours to your job. In my example, I have three levels of files, simple, intricate, and complex. Superficially, they all look great, but below the surface, they are not all created equal. Let me show you how to tell the difference. The first criteria we're going to look for in the artwork is white shapes or backgrounds. These white shapes can sometimes help or hinder your job to produce the art. So I always like to add a colored background behind my artwork. So a quick way to do that is to double click the shadow and go into the page options and go over to the background, click solid and click the color dropdown and choose the light color. Close and click OK and that can give you a colored background. Another quick way to do that is to, with nothing selected, double click your rectangle and then give it a color if it doesn't come up with a color already and there's your rectangle behind your artwork. Now that we can see our white shapes, what if our customer wanted this cat to be orange? Uh, let's look at each one and see how that would work. So this first clip art is, is there, but there are no white shapes to change to orange. So that would take a little bit of time to make him orange.
The second one, if we select on him, he is a bitmap. So we would have to either go to a photo editor or to use power trace to trace him to make a shape for the inside of the cat to make him orange. But this one down here is basically ready to go and would be minimal time to get that cat orange if I hold the control key because it's group and I can click on that white and make him orange and in seconds he's orange and ready to go to output. Now on this artwork, if your customer asks to add a drop shadow to the alligator clip art, let me show you how this white background impacts that design. So if we select on this design, you'll see that it's a bitmap that has a white background, which is very common in some graphics. So if we add a drop shadow to this design, it's going to apply it to the rectangle versus the artworks. But if we come up here to this one to where there's no white shape or background behind it, we apply our drop shadow and it applies it to the circle. And it looks exactly like it should look how the customer would want it. Next, let me show you a quick way to see how complex an art file is. The complexity of an artwork can add time to your job. The wireframe view in CorelDRAW will give you x-ray vision to see how the art is made. To go into wireframe, go to view and wireframe. While in wireframe, look for bitmaps. Bitmaps may or may not work for your process. If you see just a box or a grayscale image, this means the art is a bitmap or photo. For example, this is a bitmap. It has a rectangle around it. This guy's grayscale, so he's a bitmap. This is a bitmap as well, and there's our drop shadow as well. And here you can see how complex this design is because there's lots of lines and shapes and things like that. Yet this design is relatively simple, and this is relatively simple. And this is relatively simple. Even text can be bitmaps. Up here, since this has a rectangle around it and it's grayscale, that's a bitmap as well. To exit wireframe, go to View and Enhanced. Another thing to check for in your customer's artwork is fountain fills or gradients. You can click or control click on some objects and check in the status bar or open the property docker to see what color types they are. Be cognizant of fountain fills or gradients because they may or may not work for your process. For example, simple spot color screen printing gradients just complicate things, and gradients don't work for simple vinyl cutting. Also, if color model is critical to your process, check the colors of the art by control clicking or ungrouping to see what they are. If we control click on our raccoon until we find a color, come down on our fountain fill and double click, and click color swatch, click the color drop down, it shows it's an RGB color. Another artwork attribute that sometimes catches people off guard is the scale with image setting on outlines. If it is on, for all shapes, the art will scale properly when reduced or enlarged. If it is off, the art changes. Let me show you what I mean. This circle has an outline and is currently set to scale with image off. Thus, if I scale it, it won't stay in proportion the way the object was made. It will make it fatter and the object will change. If I undo that, and now I come into the outline settings by double clicking, and I turn my scale with image on, and now if I scale it will and reduce it, it will stay in proportion to the way the original was made. Let's look at our bitmaps in this file. When we select a bitmap, you can look in the status bar to see the resolution or the DPI. This cat is a 300 by 300 DPI and would trace well. Let's select on this bitmap. This one is 72 by 72 DPI, which means it's low res and probably a graphic from the web. This one is 300 by 300. If we zoom in, you can totally see the difference. So if I use my Z key and zoom in, and if we come over here and zoom in a little more, this guy is nice and crisp and clean and he would probably trace pretty well. But if we zoom in on this guy, He's blurry and fuzzy, so he wouldn't trace very well at all. He, you would probably want to ask for a new or higher res artwork from your customer if you had to do some high quality output. And if we scroll over here to the alligator, he's high res, but he's lots of colors, so he wouldn't trace very well, but he's very high res for any kind of digital output. He would work great. You may also want to check how the customer's file is set up in the objects, docker, or manager. Sometimes there are excessive layers or groupings that may add time to your job. To get to the object docker, go to Window, Dockers, and Object. Mine's already open, so I'll pop it open, and you can scroll around to see how many curves and objects and shapes are inside that file that you're checking of that customer. Once you have analyzed your customer's artwork files by these checkpoints, 
you will have a better idea on how to quote your job or fix the artwork for output. You can download this artwork checkpoint cheat sheet to have by your side. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on the Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial and the exercise file to follow along. You will also find other helpful tutorials on CorelDRAW.